You can zoom right out <laughs> of all the infinities to get to the, the final one. The possibilities are endless. If you're like me, you hate the idea of new software, not knowing where the shortcuts are going to be, not knowing where all the different functions are, but with Mischief, there is one reason why you really need to give it a go, and it's this infinite canvas idea. Basically, you can draw a little circle here on the screen, zoom in, draw another circle on the screen, zoom in, draw another circle on the screen, and you can keep zooming in and drawing circles on the screen until forever, basically. I think the limit is something like, I, I read an article, they said it's something like if you imagine you're in space mischief has the ability to zoom in on like a full like on like i don't know a single car in a city so it's it's like really 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 powerful when you start to think about what you can do with this app what's really awesome about this is that when you're sketching you don't need to know how big your canvas is so you just want to get ideas out there you want to do some gesture drawings let's say you've got a, a man running, this is, this is the worst stick man ever drawn of course, but let's say you're drawing this and you want to say, oh actually I want this to be the small person, I want it to be being chased by a bear. Well then you can just zoom out and you can draw your, your bear creature over here. <laughs> this is the scariest thing I think I've ever drawn. Now that is terrifying. But essentially that is the power of this program, being able to decide the size of your canvas later because I think it's using vectors. Essentially what's really interesting about this program is I think it was developed by like scientists who were just testing out data crunching theory, ways to make really really small files. In the end they ended up creating this really really powerful drawing program because let's say you, you know, create the story of the bear chasing the man. But actually, this isn't a story about the bear chasing the man. This is a story about the left nostril of, of the bear and, and the little fly that lived inside the nostril of the bear. And you could draw the little fly here if you wanted. And the more you zoom in, the more detail you can give it. You could actually, wow, I feel like I've drawn something completely different here. But let's give him some eyes and some wings. You know, you, you can keep zooming in and adding more and more detail. And in fact, the story's not really about the fly living in the left nostril. It's actually about the... the atom. <laughs> what do atoms look like? I can't actually remember. It's about the strand of DNA that is floating around on the left foot of, of the fly, in the left nostril of the bear that was chasing chasing the man. Anyway. It's a bit of an extreme situation. Now let's go for a more realistic situation. What? Let's say that you're not actually drawing anything at all. Let's say you're just taking notes in class and you've brought your tablet PC with you. So you write in the middle, today's subject is, I don't know, games. And you want to talk about, you know, you're doing a presentation about games. So you're going to have like, talks about consoles, I don't know, controllers, uh, how about, I don't know, genres of games, things like that. And you're drawing really big, or you're drawing very largely, because you don't actually know what you're going to think of next. And then you go, wait a minute, I don't have any space to draw anymore. And if this were a normal piece of paper, or if you were using something like Photoshop to take your notes, which would probably be a bad idea, then you can just zoom out, and then you can, and you have a full page of space one more, once again. So now I can use all this space to create other genres like, I don't know, adventure, RPG, action. You can start to see how powerful this really is. And going back to drawing for a moment, what I've been doing recently just as sort of practice for myself is I've been coming up with, you know, little tables like this and I've been writing things like expressions. Let's say I want to practice something like an angry expression or I want to practice something like a, like a happy expression. I'll actually just write myself these notes down, and then I'll go in and I'll draw the pictures later. So let's say I've decided to go with angry. Uh, let's, you know, let's, let's have a few spaces for like four different faces, and in here I'll draw the first face, and I don't know, just do a quick little a doodle here. <laughs> let's make this person look, I don't know, m moderately, moderately attractive, but with a, an angry expression. And, and this is not really about you know, right now we're not practicing detailed drawings, but really I just, I just wanted to practice the expressions. Let's have the, the glaring expression, like so. Oh, he looked kind of happy. Hold on. No, that's gone wrong. Oh, oh, okay, I've got a slightly more angry looking character here. So that's our, our character number one, and then I can move over here and do character number two. Let's say they're kind of 
angry but also kind of surprised at the same time. I don't know, maybe you'll have one eyebrow more like so. Okay, so you're starting to see the idea here. And it's really, really great if you're sketching because you don't need to worry about how much space you have before you start. Before I would create one file and something I liked about Procreate on the iPad is that you just create like a gallery of just random random images. They're not infinite canvases, but you can have like a whole gallery of, of pages. So for example, on your iPad Pro or iPad or whatever software, whatever tablet you're using, you have all these galleries and they don't even have to have names. You just create the file and then later on you can see like, oh, this one, this was the one with the, the pictures of when I was practicing hands. This is the one where I was practicing angry expressions. This is the one where I was practicing, you know, happy expressions. You don't have to give them names. And the same thing happens with mischief. In fact, everything can be right here on this one canvas. You can have your ideas, character, actual drawings. If you say like, oh, you know what? Actually, I want to give a little more depth to this. So I'm going to use this area here. I'm only drawing circles so that it's easier for you to see. But let's say I want to use this circle here to draw an actual full size, full size character. So yeah, here we go. Just give my, my character a, a general sort of torso and sort of body shape. I'm, this is not how I would normally draw a character, by the way, but just, just, so, just so you can get the idea. You know, and then you can go in and you don't need to worry about the resolution. Resolution is something you have to worry about in the computer world because you can't, you know, just get a bigger piece of paper and draw something in more detail. On a computer, if you don't know what resolution you start at, it can be very difficult to change it later. But with Mischief, you don't need to worry about what the resolution is at all. You can just go in later and then draw in, in detail, even though you, you didn't know you were going to need that much resolution. So right now, I'm actually not using the setting that changes the brush size. If you go into here, there's actually a way to make sure that the brush size always changes with the thing. And this is so much more detailed than I was expecting to go into at the start. At, at the start, I was I thought maybe I was just going to come up with as many different types of expressions as I could. And then I didn't realize that I would actually start practicing angry expressions. And then I didn't realize I would want to create like a full a full body portrait of 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 one of the characters right here. But this is the amount of detail I've been able to go into thanks to mischief being as powerful as it is. By the way, they're not like paying me to advertise this or anything. I just I just literally downloaded it and had a go and I wanted to talk about it. Another great thing about this program is it's free. So usually when a program is free, you think like it's probably going to be not worth my time, especially if you already pay money for programs like Photoshop, which are subscription programs. But with with mischief, I was like, wow, I can't believe how, how powerful this is, even though it, it's even though it's a free program. And no, I'm not trying to say that you should zoom in when you draw. I actually prefer to zoom in not too much. The reason this zooming ability is powerful is so that you don't need to worry about resolutions and page sizes before you start. That's why Mischief has become my go-to program when I practice drawing in the morning. I usually try to wake up kind of early in the morning and do you know, 45 minutes to an hour of drawing practice. And if I had to choose my resolution, you have to choose whether your landscape, you know, whether your page is landscape or whether your page is portrait, then you have to decide whether you're, I don't know, 300, hold on a second, DPI, you have to choose whether you're 300 DPI or 150 DPI or, or whatever, all those pointless things that only have to bother you because you're on a computer, but mischief, brings it right back to the natural experience of I want to draw, now I want to draw big, and in real life you would just use a bigger piece of paper and a thicker pen maybe. But on Mischief, you just zoom right out. Of course you can do crazy, crazy novel things like infinity, you know, you can write like, you can like write infinity and then inside the N you could write infinity and then inside that n you could write like again infinity infinity the possibilities are 
endless. You can zoom right out <laughs> of all the infinities to get to the, the final one. It's a super powerful program. I highly recommend it and especially if you are learning and still getting better and even if you're a professional and you want to just find a great tool that helps you, you know, if, you've, if you're like in a rut, you haven't been practicing enough recently and it's because, you know, you draw digitally but opening up uh, a file just to practice is a bit of a bother. Mischief is the perfect program for you because you can just wake up in the morning and say this area is going to be my my gesture drawing area and you can jump straight in trying to to draw your gesture drawings. I'm not going to do a very good gesture drawing but you know you can imagine that if this were <laughs> a gesture drawing yeah, that's a gesture. Not. That's my that's my gesture drawing for today. You know, you could actually just go into the G here and use that whole area as your space for drawing. Bit of a random video, I know, but I was really excited about this program, Mischief, mostly because it's free, uh, but also because it has really motivated me to do more practice in the mornings when usually I'm kind of like, nah, I can't be bothered to open up the computer. And especially with something like Wacom Mobile Studio Pro where just the fact that it's Windows makes it slightly harder to get into. Opening up your iPad and drawing is like super fast and immediate. But opening up Windows, you've got to log in because Windows forces you to like use a password. There might be a way to turn the password off, but I haven't figured it out. So you have to like type in your password, you have to load up a program, choose landscape or portrait, then choose what your resolution is going to be. And then if you fill up the page, you have to make a new file. And to make a new file, you have to save the old file or not save the old file. You have to make all these decisions, which you don't have to bother with with mischief. I'm just I'm just really really into it. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this this video. It's not really a review, just kind of a show and tell of, of this program called Mischief. I, I, I hope you get some use out of it. Recently the drivers have been getting better on Mobile Studio Pro. Like I'm actually able to use touch to zoom with my fingers here. That didn't work for about five to six months, but I don't know what Wacom did. They finally found a way to fix it. I don't know, a lot of things have been fixed recently, so I'm quite happy I'm on good terms with Wacom more recently. Though, I still don't have a stand. Just since I've got the Mobile Studio Pro out today, let me just show you the stand I am using. This is from a company called Best Tech. It's got fans built in, but I don't use the fans because I think the fan in the Mobile Studio Pro is fine. It goes up to this sort of angle, not very, not very steep, and it goes completely flat. Essentially, I would usually draw either at this low angle or the almost full angle, like so. That's what I seem to like the most about it. I don't take it anywhere, of course, because look, it's thicker than the Mobile Studio Pro itself. It's super heavy. So no, I wouldn't recommend this stand as the, a stand to actually bring anywhere. But when you're at home and you want a stand that rotates, it also has a has rotating things on the base. It's perfect. I just leave it here on the table, and then when I wake up, come and have a have a bit of breakfast, have a cup of coffee, do a bit of drawing with Mischief, which is my new favorite program. I don't think I would finish an illustration in here. The tools are really, really basic. It's like you have the pencil, the medium pencil, or the thick pencil. <laughs> or rather the pencil, the pen, and the I don't even know what this is. What is this? This is like a calligraphy, a calligraphy brush or something. I, I don't ever use that. I only use the, the pencil and the eraser. It's a great app. I highly recommend that you check it out. I have plenty of other videos. If you want to see more on this tablet, the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro, I also have a review on that, so do check it out. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, share links and all that good stuff, and I will see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video. Why is my nose so itchy?